Well, damn it, if the Democratic infighting hasn't already begun. The progressive wing of the party says the centrists aren't motivating a huge potential base. The centrists say the progressives are scaring the most reliable voters. We've got any number of special interest groups threatening to pull their support for the party the instant things don't go their way. And groups that would have been under existential threat under a second Trump term promising to walk away and not vote if their priorities aren't emphasized. And meanwhile, the knives come out for Biden from every direction, right? Pulling him all these different ways, all under the threat of tearing his coalition apart before he can even make it to the midterms. And all I've got to say about all of that is good. Right? Like, that's how this shit is supposed to work. We're not supposed to put our candidate's name on a fucking flag and a T-shirt and defend him even when he's completely breaking with any semblance of morality. We're supposed to hold him accountable. We're supposed to call him out when he does or says something wrong. And we're supposed to insist that our demands are met because that's the whole fucking point. The whole point of winning the election is to have our guy there, a guy that you can push around in office. If we wanted a president who could push us around, we'd have kept the guy we had. But if you'll recall, our refusal to worship is kind of what brought us here in the first place, right? Look, it's a coalition party. We're not all in this for the same reason, right? That's why you never see us marching in the kind of lockstep you saw out of the right over the last four years. And to emphasize that fact, hey, I'm an atheist activist that's proudly endorsing a reverend for Georgia Senate and sending him money. And if he ever starts talking some shit about how he wants to make the Bible Georgia state book, I'm going to yank my support away faster than he can say amen. Of course, this tendency on the left leaves a lot of liberals wringing their hands. You know, after all, if the other side always falls in line and we're always fighting with each other, how the fuck can we ever expect to get anything done long term? Shouldn't we at least consider taking the tack that's been so successful for the other guys? You know, after all, infighting just offers ammunition to the opposition when it comes time for re-election. And if we just spent four years bashing the Democrats for not getting enough shit done, it'll be really hard to fire up the base when the next election comes around. And while that may be true, I'd argue that the solution isn't for us to refrain from bashing them. It's for them to get enough done. I mean, sure, we got to be realistic with our expectations, but the system gives us too few chances to chime in. And when it does, the choices are too binary. If we neglect to push back between the elections, we've ceded all our real political power in advance. And even though we often treat it otherwise, this isn't some issue that arises from democratic mismanagement of their caucus or their coalition. It's the inevitable result of being progressive. I mean, it's in the names, right? If you're conservative, you're trying to conserve things the way they are. You might also want to roll shit back, but the goal is defined by either the present or the past. Those are knowable things. When you're a progressive, your goals are defined by the future. We all agree we want to progress, and in most ways we agree what that means, but that doesn't mean we all agree on the best way to get there. It's the GOP's indelible advantage. Which way do you go is a question you don't have to solve when you're standing still. But it's also a byproduct of our allegiance to reality, you know, something that encumbers Republicans less and less by the hour. There are plenty of policies and policy goals I vociferously defend, but there's none I'm so married to I'd hold it in spite of overwhelming scientific evidence to the contrary. This is not the case for today's Republicans. And when you never have to worry about changing your mind, there's no need and indeed no point in arguing the merits of your position internally. I, I, I mean, this is what you signed up for, guys. We're humanists. This is our lot in life. It's not much different than the strains that arise when you stop counting on God to take care of your life and start relying on yourself. It's harder, sure, but that's just because the job is getting done now. Look, there are a ton of lessons that we need to take away from the debacle of an administration that we're limping out of, but the most important one, or at least the one that seems most important to me, is the grave danger the nation and the world faces when a party refuses to hold its own leaders accountable. If we get so wedded to winning that we can't bring ourselves to criticize the politicians we support, then what the fuck have we won?